All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and let's do things backwards. Start with the charts. The reason for this is, look where we've ended up. I was saying for a while that best case scenario, we get rejected and we end up down here, and this will give the Fed a lot more credibility, leaning towards being more accommodative to markets. So we're down there at the moment. This is good. Is this the canary in the coal mine, the early warning sign for a CPI top? in the short term have we potentially seen peak inflation was Raul Paul right and have we seen the last rate hike in June already are there no more rate hikes to come we of course have the Fed minutes out today so that will be interesting we'll have to read between the Fed tea leaves as that comes out later on today we have the futures which are slightly flat they're more or less flat at the moment slightly red um, so are we going to get is the Fed going to spook markets? Are we going to get some trap high? Or have we already found a really early cycle low and that we're going to break out of this blue blue downtrend line? Nobody knows, but my suspicion is that we have one last low or at least a double bottom to form before we can actually go. So I'll be holding on to this short and seeing if we can get down here slash one last lower low. Um, the VIX hasn't spiked yet. So does that mean we haven't seen true capitulative selling? Perhaps. Over in the UK... Um, we've got a whole lot of chop as you can see but more or less sideways for a very long time now so but that's the that's the UKX for you gold looks like it's putting in one of these capitulative lows now the question is I've said before on this channel if you're watching you'll know what I'm talking about I said that all the while we were in here we had a good chance of breaking out and going that's what this long was doing lined up um, I did say that we had to be open to a stop sweep and that we might be hanging around in here but I can tolerate that only for a small amount of time, only for a small amount of time can I tolerate being below this blue line here before we have to stop making excuses for gold and start to abandon this bull cycle thesis. So if we can form a nice decent swing low somewhere in this neighborhood, promptly break this trend line or recover this blue trend line here, then I don't have a problem with that. And we can take longs probably above, above this and even out of this. But we have to be open now to, if we start to chop around and trade sideways in here then that's not a good that's not a good look for gold and it's starting to make me second guess my bullish thesis for gold silver still not looking to jump in front of any trains still going to wait for confirmation but i would think we're getting close to both gold and silver forming a low and only when we've confirmed an uptrend for gold do we get interested in the miners Bitcoin battle at 20k, but look where we are, right in our timing band. So I think if we could get one last low, whether it's a deep low, whether it's a shallow low, um, but just some sort of clear swing low, something like this or like this, inside of this window, then I would say that gives us a pretty decent shot at a long. And I would even expect, given the amount of downside that we've had over the past, well, seven or eight, nine months, that we should be able to get a, a pretty decent 60 day cycle to the upside out of this. So watching that closely, um, looking to scoop some ETH up if it gets down here, but we'll see about that. Yields, yields coming off. Yields are telling us that the bond market's pricing in a recession. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. And at the same time, there's still this flight to safety as the dollar is is bid. Look at this, absolute breakout for the for the Dixie. So, of course, the Dixie is still dying, but it's the world reserve asset. And so all the other currencies in this basket are just under pressure because of that status. So don't get it twisted. They are all dying. They will continue to die. Um, but we are coming up to this cycle low for Bitcoin, as denoted by this blue line here. So that's, this would be a perfect day 60. So I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Voyager have filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So own your own keys, okay? I've been saying this over and over again. It's another exchange to be dead by the looks of things. If you keep your crypto and Bitcoin on an exchange, then you end up taking these sorts of risks. And there's really no need to when you can own your own keys and keep those on a cold wallet. So do that. Largely, the Voyager collapse is attributed to the exposure they had to Three Arrows Capital, which were obviously super, super, super leveraged, and that has come back to blow them up, ultimately. Um, so remember, the government can take everything, including the keys to your home, but it cannot take the keys to your Bitcoin. 
This is only true though if you own the keys on a cold wallet. So make sure you do that. There's a link to both a Trezor and a Ledger in the description if you want to go straight there and secure your own keys. Um, in the meantime, watch out because there's a new virus which is targeting crypto users. So Cyber, a cyber intelligence company, has discovered a new strain of computer virus called Pennywise. And this is designed to target crypto wallets. And the creators of this virus trick users into downloading it by telling them on YouTube videos that they're going to get free Bitcoin mining software. The virus has only targeted Zcash and Ethereum wallets, likely because it's kind of difficult once you've got hold of some stolen Bitcoin to actually get it out of the system. Um, so anyway, look out for that. Don't download any spurious mining stuff the only way you can mine bitcoin is properly and that is a highly technical thing so if anyone ever tells you you can mine some crypto using your phone or, or without an enormous barrier to entry in terms of learning and, and programming skills and all of that stuff then don't believe the hype it's probably a scam celsius has paid another 40 million off of its bitcoin loan which means the new liquidation price is sub 3k so is Celsius going to recover? Are we not going to see Celsius blow up? Are we going to see them truly bailed out? BitMEX is banning Russian citizens and residents from accessing the exchange from within the EU on the 11th of July. So whenever I see this sort of thing, I just think it's kind of silly. And I say that because, you know, first of all, just use a different exchange. Right? That's just one exchange. There's loads of them out there. There's loads of ways to do it. But secondly, you know... These days, it's so easy to get get hold of a VPN and just use that to spoof your location. So even if you're in the EU, you could just get a VPN and change your location with one or two clicks and then spoof your IP and then there you go. You can just access the same exchange. So it just doesn't matter anyway. Um, it's a completely, you know, it's a complete waste of time. Anyway, if you haven't got a VPN, there's a link for one of those in the description as well. It's only a couple of quid a month. So if you're going to be into crypto, if you're going to buy crypto, you really ought to have one. Make sure you can stay safe online. The uh, Bank of England has called for stricter crypto regulation after two trillion drop in market capitalization. So I saw this and the first thing I thought was, weren't they just not that long ago? It was only back in April. Look, the government sets up plans to make the UK a global crypto asset technology hub. But really, when you dive deeper into this, um, it all comes down to they just want to know how to tax DeFi. They, they still don't really know how to deal with it. So, you know, DeFi lending, yield farming, all of that stuff. It's like, well, it's not the same as capital gain. So they just need to lay out a clear framework for how they're going to tax all this stuff. And ultimately, that's all they want. They just don't want anyone getting away with making loads of money and never paying any tax. So getting a little more abstract with T analyst charts, but... You can see this succession of bananas inside of these bigger circles tells us to maybe expect a 400k Bitcoin price around 2024 and then a drop to 150k during the bear market low for 2025. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if when we get this drop, as and when, whatever the numbers are, it'll be interesting to know if people are going, oh, look, it dropped to 150k. I told you it was going to crash. <laughs> because that's how it goes right bitcoin's a bubble bitcoin's dead bitcoin's a bubble bitcoin's dead and yeah and how do you justify it even at these levels people are still saying ha told you so told you bitcoin's dead i mean it's twenty thousand dollars a coin bro anyway the bitcoin mvrv z score is now deep into the green zone which has historically signaled market bottoms on the four prior occasions that it occurred so here we are again. Doesn't mean we're going to V out of here and start an uptrend. Not necessarily. I think we've got a long and drawn out double bottom. If you've been watching the videos, you already know that. Um, and I think we don't actually find the low until towards the end of the year. But this does look like now represents a pretty decent time to accumulate if you're interested in that sort of thing. The Mayer multiple for Bitcoin currently trading at 0.5, meaning the price is at a 50% discount to the 200 day moving average. And this has only happened on 3% of all of trading days for Bitcoin. So 97% of Bitcoin's life, it has been more expensive relative to its 200 day moving average. So if you're looking for value, this is it. Il Capo of Crypto is saying lower highs all the time. Pumps have low volume and they look corrective. His main target remains 15.8 to 16.2. And I like this target, this target to me would trap a lot of people. It would trap the balls that think we've already found the low. 
but it's not 12 to 14k which everyone seems to think we're going to everyone seems to think that that's that's baked in at this point and i'm not saying we can't go to 12 or 14k i'm just saying this would make sense to me if we could drop down just to sweep these prior lows at around 17 and a half into that 60 day cycle low and look this is a four hour chart so right down here around the 10th or 11th if we could just get a little undercut of these lows we could actually form a perfect 60 day cycle low like i've been speculating we might and then we can go so i kind of like the look of this but it remains to be seen meanwhile in turkey peer-to-peer -peer bitcoin trading volume is up 40 percent and that's at a time when inflation is currently at 78 percent so a lot of people are quick to say, well, what's the use case for Bitcoin? It has no real utility. Well, you're only saying that because we're not living in a time of 78% inflation. But don't don't get it twisted. We will be soon enough. And if you look at Bitcoin here, this is priced in the Turkish lira. Over a five-year chart, you can see the chart's actually a completely different shape. And there's the reason I'm pointing this out, the reason I'm bringing this up, is we made this all-time high then the low then we made a new all-time high and this is not just a little liquidity trap like we had against the pound and the dollar say this is an, a, a significant new high then we made a slightly lower high and then the other point to make out is you can see here they haven't even taken out the original base but if you compare this to the the dollar chart for example we made that same high and that same low but then this high was only just a few a few thousand dollars above this distribution top right then we came down swiftly and took out this base here. But as you can see, against the Turkish Lira, Bitcoin is massively outperforming. So in these countries where inflation is at nonsensical numbers, then the demand for Bitcoin is skyrocketing because this is the use case for Bitcoin. When fiat currencies fail, you can opt for a harder money that cannot be inflated. The reserve risk on chain has fallen below the green box and there's only one other time this happened and it was in august 2015 right before an enormous bull run Zelensky from the ukraine has said he's going to need a cool three quarters of a trillion to keep his country up and running so they're planning to print at the same time we've, i've already shown this on the channel a couple of times that, that the us is planning to print they're saying they already need more money to prepare for what they call the second one of these eras um, which he promised is coming. How he knows that, you know, I'm not sure. Um, although I have got my suspicions, I'll put a link at the end of this video for if you want to go and see that document that I think is promising us that one of these will show up in January. And at the same time, the, the European Central Bank is broke and there's no amount of monetary easing that's even going to help them. So more printing is inevitable and that is going to drive adoption. And here's another example. Um, in Africa, the CEO of Binance CZ is saying that they're primed for crypto adoption with less than 20% of them have a bank account. So if you don't have a bank account and you're unbanked and the bank is uh, have full discretion to choose who is allowed to apply and who isn't allowed to apply for a bank account, when corruption runs as rife as it does in certain places in Africa, then Bitcoin is a permissionless system. And therefore, anyone with the phone and internet access can become their own bank using Bitcoin. Bitcoin is hope in one of these systems. We live in one of these insane systems where, remember, Jerome Powell, the chair of the Federal Reserve, is literally quoted as saying, we understand better how little we understand about inflation. <laughs> I mean, this is this guy's job. And especially as this guy is one of the most powerful guys in finance, of course he understands. He's just, they've just given up caring. They just know inflation is inevitable. They know we're going to reach these turkey levels soon enough. So you better opt out. Goldman Sachs has executed the first Bitcoin futures and options block trade in Asia. So this thing's going global at the institutional level. We're going to continue to see this. I'm convinced of that. And uh, make no mistake, a tsunami of money is waiting to flow into Bitcoin. So that's it from me. Um, just a quick one today. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you did. Let me know if you didn't. And whatever you do today, take care out there because of the Fed minutes. So it's going to be a lot of chop. There's going to be a lot of stop runs and volatile swings most likely. So trade safe and uh, look after yourselves. And I'll be back tomorrow to talk about whatever comes out with the Fed minutes. So if you want to see all that and more, make sure you're subscribed. Drop a like on the video. I'd appreciate that.
and uh, take care of yourself. Cheers. All the best.